Sylvia Macaulay, his father, is a judge, or was at the time, a judge, Italian. He was a Sicilian judge. Can you imagine a judge in Sicily? He's still alive. Can you imagine that? Sicilian judges, I understand, are killed off all the time. <laughs> I met the fella. So uh, Silvio brought him over, his uh, mother and father, to meet me. And it was great because they speak no English and I speak no Italian. But we got along beautifully. We understood each other. You know, you don't need to know the person's language to be able to communicate. And every so often, Silvio was there. He, he, he would try to tr translate, and his father would say, no. And I would say, no. <laughs> We're understanding each other. And Silvio couldn't understand how, how we could talk to each other. It was great. A very bright guy. And I mention him because... Um, you know, in, as a judge, law, the um, language is really important. Having good language, being able to say exactly what you really want to say correctly. And this is what Silvio brought to the, to the theory. For him, he pointed out to me, it's his definitions that have really made it. He has beautiful theorems, but uh, it's his definitions that have been so important the definition of zero knowledge proof. For example, uh, these zero knowledge proofs, they, they, are, they, are, they are proofs of theorems, mathematical theorems, which have a very curious property. Uh, I can prove a theorem to you so that they're, they're randomized so that you are convinced with that with high probability the theorem is true uh, and that I know the proof but in such a way that you cannot turn around and convince anybody else. It's interesting. It's, I convince you by being able to answer questions you, you put to me. Only a person who knows the proof of the theorem can answer those questions. So because I can answer them, I convince you that I do know the, the proof of the theorem. You cannot turn around and convince anybody else because you'll be given Different questions, new questions. You won't be able to answer those other questions. So uh, it, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful theory, and uh, it does require randomization again, as we talked about, and they generally require us to be able to produce random numbers between us. So that's part of it. And uh, the, the, what you were talking about was, was uh, this particular zero-knowledge proofs where, in fact, what I do is I just ship the proof to you and there's no communication and it looks almost impossible to do because we have to have these random numbers and we have to have communication, the whole protocol calls for communication. And uh, the point was to somehow turn that into something that could be shipped to you safer. It could be shipped to you and then of course you could ship it to somebody else and they would have that proof. They would know that proof but they wouldn't be able to produce a new proof. It, it's safely in the sense that what you get would not help you to understand a, a reasonable mathematical proof. It would not help you to be able to create another mathematical proof. And the point of this, I, I, there's one sort of like a prover and one's a verifier is that an aspect of it? Yeah, so what, tell me how this I'm the prover happen. who's going to prove to the theorem to you. Right. And you're the verifier who wants to verify that the theorem is true. And so those are the prover or verifier. And what uh, Macaulay and Goldwasser and Rakoff did was to really define prover. I mean, the, the concept is there, is the verifier and those protocols, what it means to be a zero-knowledge proof. It's a, very, it's a very interesting thing here. Zero-knowledge, the whole idea is I will give you this proof and you will not be able to turn around and give, and give it to anybody else. You won't get any knowledge from me. But it's not true that you won't get any knowledge from me. You are going to discover that, first of all, 
not just that the theorem is true, but that I know a proof. So you're going to learn more. And in fact, the amount of conversation, the amount of talk we have to do, gives you a bound on the length of the actual proof. So when we talk like this, you find out that the proof is this long, not longer. This is how long. If, if, if you want a proof, you don't have to go beyond this. It gives you information. The interesting thing is he called it zero knowledge. And it's wonderful because it's a clear definition of how to tell when uh, proof is zero knowledge. And it's not really zero knowledge, but it doesn't matter. He said this is zero knowledge. He's defined it. 